Hello, my name is Melinda. Welcome to 20th Century Travelers, where we'll be discussing immigration to the United States in the early 20th century by the decade. In this episode, we'll be exploring the years 1900 through 1910. This period of time saw one of the biggest explosions in immig of immigration in U.S. history. Today, we'll be looking at two of the largest groups that were moving in, who, even though they were treated very similarly, adapted to life in America in very different ways. Today, we'll be looking at two of the largest groups that were moving in, and even though they were treated very similarly, they adapted to life in America in very different ways. So before we get into our immigrants, um, first let's talk about some of the big events that were already happening in the United States during this time. So first, Teddy Roosevelt was president for the large majority of this period. We also saw the implementation of the New York ball drop tradition in 1907. Also, the first man to reach the North Pole did that during this decade, and our country was represented in the world's first world fair located in Paris, France. There were three immigration-related policies set in place between 1900 and 1910, all of which placed higher restrictions and limitations on what kinds of people could get in and how they could become a naturalized citizen. The first was the Immigration Act of 1903, which stated that no anarchists or people who would otherwise attempt to overthrow the government could get into our country. The second was the Naturalization Act, which combined the functions of immigration and naturalization in the government and also made English a requirement to become a naturalized citizen. Then by 1907, we had the Immigration Act of 1907, which required potential immigrants to make a declaration of stay, which basically stated whether or not their residence was going to be permanent or temporary. Um, and then they also placed restrictions on certain kinds of mental illnesses, disabilities, and certain kinds of criminals, and women coming to the United States for immoral purposes. So this decade saw an increase of nearly 2 million people who were immigrating into the United States, with 10 million immigrants living in the States by the start of the 1900s, and over 12 million by 1910. Uh, the main groups in this wave of immigrants, and what we'll be talking about in this video, were the Russian and Eastern European Jewish population and Italians. By the 1800s, the Jewish population in Eastern Europe and Russia was being heavily persecuted against. Jews could hardly work or live in the area, forcing them to look abroad for some kind of safe haven. In 1896, journalist Abraham Kahan had written an article in The Atlantic describing a rally of Jewish people that had gathered in the Kiev. The cry, To America, had rung out from the crowd, and soon Jews all over Eastern Europe and Russia were making that same call. America, however, was not the wonderland it was made out to be. By the time the Jewish population started arriving in America, they were subjected to heavy amounts of discrimination and were coming in with waves of other immigrants. Many were forced to change their names for the convenience of immigration officials, and they were also forced to live in cramped tenements among other immigrants in the Lower East Side of New York. It was very hard for the Jews to find work as they came with very few skills since their mother countries barred them from getting any kind of work. Most wound up working in clothes production, and it wasn't uncommon to see whole families working in the same sweatshop, each only being paid pennies for their work. Those who didn't get work in clothes production took to the street, selling just about anything they could get their hands on to make some kind of money, bringing on the stereotype that Jews were swindlers and cheapstakes, which didn't help their struggle to make a place for themselves in America. Despite the hardships they faced, the Jews still managed to create something for themselves in the United States. As the years went by, the Lower East Side of New York had transformed into an almost exclusively Jewish area. Jews could be found in most of the shops, homes, and community centers, and we still see this influence they have today. It was a slightly different story with Italians. The country of Italy had only just reunited under one flag after a long conflict between the North and the South. Workers suffered from high taxes and low wages, and the United States had come to obtain the allure of opportunities and higher wages, 
So many Italians, especially Southern Italians, began them to make their way here with the intention of returning to their home country. Italians received low wages and faced discrimination against what kind of jobs they could get. They were perceived as too small and weak to do construction work, although that wound up being largely the kind of work they did as they worked for cheap. Much like the Jews where they lived, they made theirs. It wasn't uncommon to see entire villages come together in the same city. Through large festas in the city where they made a huge scene and celebrated their heritage and celebrated their patron saints of their cities. On the other side of the country, in California, there's an Italian man named Amadeo Giannini. He was a successful businessman and a broker. During this time, immigrants frequently struggled with a place to keep their finances, as many banks refused them. After the San Francisco earthquake of 1906, devastating many of the immigrants there, Giannini created a temporary bank for them to keep their money until things started to get put back together. He also founded the Bank of Italy, which would become one of the largest banks in the United States and would eventually be renamed the Bank of America. While most Italians would eventually go home, the Jews largely stayed here. In the next episode, we'll talk more about the Jewish population, as well as the rising Mexican populations coming in, and things starting up among African American communities. This episode was written by me, Melinda, and shot and edited by Emily. Thank you for watching 20th Century Travelers. Bye bye.